we have our five person quorum, so might as well open the meeting. Motion. Second. Second. All right, the meeting is open. This is being recorded, John. Um, they'll edit it later and put it up on YouTube. We started recording it about 15 minutes early. Yeah, All right. Sorry, it was a little late. This, I told him it would be. Uh, I'm gonna text Pete. Actually, he's um, he's in Brockton. Uh, uh, we have a quorum. Um, essentially, John uh, Stephen had um, texted me last week with a really good idea um, to make sure we kind of had a meet uh, and uh, went over the articles, make sure everything was ready. We had a plan uh, going into town meeting. Um, I kind of dropped the ball on that one, getting it done a little sooner. Um, but the warrant has been released. Everybody's, if you, if you guys haven't seen it or if you have, um, I reviewed it, went over it real quick. And uh, the articles all look solid. There's nothing that didn't make any changes. Nothing was, you know, done. A little disturbing that they pull, still put the recommendations of the other committees up, but it is what it is. Um, nobody opposed anything. The committees all say to go with the recommendations, so wasn't much of a deal. Um, but I guess we'd probably start with um, who. Uh, if anybody would like to uh, like to go up and do some speaking, generally it's um, in the past I went up and just fielded any questions that came up about them. Um, for the most part, I, I mean, they, they read the article, you know, we give a quick two seconds, you know, this one's for this, you know, committee thinks it's a good idea and we recommend, you know, funding it. That's about it. Um, we haven't really had any opposition to, to anything, you know, aside from last year's, you know, prior to the meeting. Um, but aside from that, I mean, people like to hear what the, what's going on. Some people do have questions here and there as far as, uh, you know, quite frankly, what, you know, what's the CPA money? Where's it coming from? Like, you know, things like that more than anything. You might end up actually getting at after the fact. You know, if they know that you're on CPA or you get up and say anything on any of the articles, they um, you'll get asked after the fact, you know, how do I get involved? I have a project, you know, and stuff like that. It's more, uh, like I said, almost after the fact. We are, um, we are article number, our first article is 38. Um, and it's basically our budget article um what we set aside it'll be 23.5 for our administrative and then uh 47 for all three branches of uh of the funds and a balance of estimated budget reserve 305 uh 305,500 um they are kind of they were a little worried those of you that knew and what voted on the uh, the other article for housing uh, that we did uh, we did about a month ago, um, yeah. That there was a little bit of a cut in what they their estimates were, but since we always underestimate what what our kickback's going to be and and what our reserves will be, uh, we still fell within that that uh, window. So I think we're all set. Um, they made you know just making some some wording adjustments, but nothing, nothing changing the substance of, of any of the articles from what we accepted. But I was not sure if anybody had a chance to, to review them as well. Yeah, I did, Derek. And it's, it's actually the day I, I emailed you or texted you about uh, bringing the committee back together. And it was after reviewing them and just kind of thinking, you know, it's really been since February since we all sat down to talk about these things. Uh, and just make sure, you know, we're all aware, we're all able to get up and speak to it if needed. Um, really, I think the big thing here is that, you know, we're in a financial 
economic crisis after after the COVID, uh, and the hesitancy from the town is going to be to not want to approve mm. articles. We have some big budget articles, and making sure the town is re-educated that you know these funds have to go to projects like this, and they by saving and not spending this money, it doesn't help the town any. They can't use it for other things like funding teachers or you know funding um, the school building. It has to be used for you know these specific things. But I think an opportunity, Derek, would be as Article 38. And I'm glad it's our first one because it really highlights what are our pools, what can we spend money on, uh, and so I'd, I'd recommend that you know when you go up there to introduce, or if you could go up to introduce the Article 38, just kind of give an overview of you know these are the buckets we can spend on, and the following articles. Um, have been vetted by the Community Preservation Committee uh, to make sure that they fall in line with the state. If we do not approve these articles, it sits in a fund to be used for other projects like these and it can only be used for projects like these. And that's really why I wanted to get together is, is make sure that we were, because uh, you know we can't talk business, I can only recommend that we have a meeting to get on the same page, uh, but really have the opportunity to say, you know, I think we, we should really in, in, enforce that, well not enforce it, but um, to speak to it at the meeting so that the, the townspeople are educated uh, about what this money is, because we are spending a, a good deal of money on really great projects, I feel. Uh, I just, I don't want, I don't want the current economic climate to, uh, you know, to potentially sway voters from not approving any of these articles. I agree with Steve. Uh, it's re-educating the uh, voters and letting them know these funds are available strictly for CPA. Like Steve just said, it's just re-educating the voter and we're hoping for the support to move these projects forward. I think we have something ready to go on that. I'm Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's a very good point. You know, I know myself, I've been asked a number of questions um, over the past really two months about if, is there anything else CPA could actually do to, to help the community? You know, and basically without, you know, throwing things really far out there and, you know, kind of some, some really out of the box thinking, I think that we have you know, with, with accepting that other article and putting that on the warrant, the uh, the housing assistance. Uh, is that rental. this article? The yeah, housing assistance? On, yeah, rental assistance is on this one. It's our uh, it's our last article. Um, I forget what number it was, 40 something. 58 or something like that? It's uh, no, 80 something. Yeah, it had, to, it had to have been tacked on at the end because the warrant was already pretty much set, right? Yeah, I believe. Um, Maybe not. Yep, it's number 48. Okay. No, so we go 38 to 48. Um, nine articles for projects and one for budgetary. So that's about it. Um, like I said, I think that, you know, the that, that I don't think is going to face any opposition and I, I mean just judging by you know the general feedback from people that do know CPA and what it is I, I wouldn't really think that there's going to be any any real pushback against any of the projects I mean people especially these you can't go anywhere people aren't hopping on planes you know they're taking the precautions so they're spending time in town looking for recreational possibilities and this thing basically you know a lot of these articles are you know, having to do with things you can do in town without having to, to you know, run to a, a neighboring town that has these these facilities or these these parks. You know, with the with the new park up town would be a great one for that. Purchasing hearts of and expanding on things that are right here in our own backyard. You know, things that people can can use. And I don't think anybody's gotten a better education. You know, than right now about how important it is to have have open space and recreational properties that are accessible to people right in your own area. You know, they feel safe. You go down the street, you feel safe. You go to a park and I don't know if you've been over to, to Wampatuck. We, we mountain bike um, in Wampatuck and the place has been a mob scene for the past two months. No parking spots, people parking on top of each other. 
roving groups of, of people hiking and, you know, 10 to 15 people in a pile because that's where they meet up with their friends. Things like that. You can't even find parking spots at most state parks. It makes me nervous. We didn't even stop. We actually drove in, turned around, drove back out. You know, we'll ride around here. We'll ride down to Hartsliff. We'll, you know, stick to this area where we don't have to worry about crowds. Yeah, Hartsliff yeah. has seen a lot of additional use, uh, I've noticed, over the last couple of months. Um, and it, it's funny, you know, I think you guys know about a disc golfer and play at Hartsliff. Um, and the amount of new players that have picked up the game because – all other sports, you couldn't, you can't play basketball, um, you, you can't play baseball. A lot of other sports were, you know, are off the table. And folks knew that, oh, well, here's a sport we can play that's really socially distanced. Um, and it, oh, it cost me 25 bucks to get started. And they grabbed the, you know, three pack of discs and, oh, we have one right in our backyard. And so the amount of people that we're seeing come through Hearts of, uh, just in disc golf alone is, is staggering. Baseball's up. Baseball's up and running. Now it's up and running now. Yes, Joe, it's up and running now. But two months ago, it's not the case. Yeah. No. That's why you guys all have to pick up golf. <laughs> Do that, too. <laughs> we've been, but we've even been, then? We, I, we played right up until they closed. <laughs> nine, nine, nine this morning. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, I came from a tournament here. I had a, we do stroke play tournaments with members every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I came from a, a stroke play format directly here to have this meeting. And I should be sitting on a veranda staring at a putting green right now, but <laughs> we'll leave that till tomorrow. <laughs> but I think that, I mean, I don't think we have to spend a whole hell of a lot of time here. I think, uh, you know, if anybody has any other ideas or anybody wants to, I mean, we can walk up there. I mean, we can basically go up there, two, three people. We can bring five people up there. doesn't really matter. Usually they just ask for a representative, you know, to come forth. Um, you know, usually the, last year the moderator will actually ask me, um, would you please come downstairs and, or, you know, down to the front and, uh, you know, speak on these articles. Um, but anybody's more than welcome. You know, we don't have to just, it doesn't have to just be me. It can be whoever would like to go down, um, you know, and, and say something, you know, and, and it, at that, it doesn't hurt actually to, if nobody does go down front, um, it doesn't hurt to, uh, be called upon and, and make a statement, you know, as well. Um, we've had, a couple times, I think Jim Paul said something uh, last year um, about the tramp house. Um, you know, basically answering some questions. So, yeah, that's actually a good point, Derek. Do we have anyone that of the people who submitted proposals ready to speak on any of them, if need? Yep, we can actually, and that's one of the things that with that like the tramp house last year i actually asked jim to you know i said you know jim paul could speak about it and basically he stood up and said something so it's the same thing we get charlie dave taylor you know i think that steve would be a great one for the hot Sift project uh gene blaney we can you know anybody that that basically put it forth as the sponsor of these things you can certainly ask them to 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 stand and speak yeah, we might we might want to just have the uh, the sprinkler one with somebody in you know in the back pocket just ready to speak, uh, since it's such a large amount, people might have uh, questions or concerns about that one. Yeah, I, I know Scott will be, probably be there. I mean, I assume he's going to be there. You know, they've got a yeah. lot of stuff to go over for fire. So, I mean, he'd probably be a great person to to say something about that. We can. The beauty of this is too is we can if you. See at town meeting, there's always a little bit of a milling crowd around out in the uh, foyer uh, or even outside before the meeting starts. And you're able to make some contacts with people, you know. So I think that uh, prior to meeting, you know, we can certainly pinpoint a couple of the people that would like to, you know, have there as a as a backup to to make some statements or uh, you know delve into a little more information should it be asked. 
So I think yeah, Scott would be a good one. Especially with the, uh, the social distancing rules they're putting in place and how they, it might not be a big crowd to begin with. Yeah. Uh, might just be, just be prepared, you know. It, it, it could. And with that too, I mean, I, th I think that benefits a lot of things where, you know, they, they had cut the quorum um, number significantly uh, through the, uh, you know, they adjusted the town bylaw and whatnot. It used to, it used to be 300. And I think that now it's 100 or something like that um, to actually vote at town meeting. I'm not a hundred percent sure of that I know it used to be 300 because we always had trouble getting 300 and we actually had probably uh, four or five years ago, we had a, a former selectman jump up and question the quorum right at the end of the night with uh, like two articles to go because he watched a bunch of people leave after their article was voted on and we didn't have a quorum. So we had to end town meeting and then come back to it in fall. It was kind of a, yeah, yeah. You got a little bit of heat for that one, but. Derek, uh, me and Pete can speak on the land uh, purchase. Yeah, whatever, whatever anybody wants. You know, if you want, I'll do the same thing we did last year. I'll walk down, announce it, ask for a motion. Um, once they put the motion, you know, um, out there um get it seconded from somebody or in the audience anyone can can second them and then uh they put it to a vote and at that point if there's any questions he'll offer the moderator will offer that is there anything to speak anything you know opposed or or for and that's generally when you would would say all right you know i i actually you know, think that Joe or, you know, Pete or, or Steven, um, you know, can explain this a little better if anybody's in question of what this is about. And then it opened the floor to, to the next person. So just knowing going forward that, you know, starting like, like Steven had said with the first article and just kind of read a little quick 10 seconds. They do want to go through these quick. So we try not to drag them out because, you know, when you have 70 or 80 articles to get through, plus I think there's like 12 or 15 for the special town meeting before town meeting, you know, this they, they tend to want to really jump through these things pretty quickly because otherwise, I mean, I've been there until 10 30, quarter of 11 before trying to get through town meeting because it's things that have a lot of opposition. Yeah, so, I'll, I'll go ahead and sweep. Yeah, ho hopefully, we don't, we don't see that this time. We can just cruise right through being right, you know, right smack dab in the middle of this. It's, it's going to be kind of an all all nighter. You know, if they have a very big quorum, I mean, I'm not against anybody leaving after, you know, if we end up having 250 people there or something like that, you know, people that finish, uh, you know, get through their articles, I, I have no problem with it leaving. Some of it's like watching paint dry. That's why they put the budgetary ones at the front and they go through all the finances and stuff like that when everybody's there, because otherwise people scoot out and it is, it is pretty pretty boring stuff for the most part. It's all just <coughs> dotting, uh, dotting I's and crossing T's, you know, putting things out there that are completely necessary, but it is what it is. But if anything, anybody doesn't have anything else to say, I think that we could probably, uh, you know, wrap up this, uh, this meeting and, and go at it on Monday. Derek, I know you've been busy. Did you have a chance to talk to Stuart about being able to put up uh, new fencing backstops down the Little Lake Field? Yes, and one of the things that you can do is obviously um, sports fields. Now, the creation of a sports field is A-OK. -okay. The maintenance and upkeep is an iffy. A fence and replacing an existing fence has been done. Nobody questioned it. It would be something that would want to kind of almost prepare ourselves. You know, he's not our legal counsel. He's our CPA counsel. So it's, it's one of those things that we can put through the question. I'd rather go through, you know, Mark Clifford or somebody like that with something and say, hey, look at, 
do you see this as being within the, the legal guidelines of what we can use money for? You know, because it, what I look at is an upkeep and maintenance thing, you know, it's a, the chain link fence, you know, uh, recold spraying galvanized spray on it every five years and extend the life by 30 years. You know, leaving a fence to, that's a maintenance issue, leaving a fence to rust, is it neglected and now it needs maintenance? I mean, you know, I do know that, that, that maintaining existing parks and properties generally isn't, uh, isn't covered. So we can dig a little deeper, ask council and go from there. You know, maybe if we come up with a couple of towns that have done it, you know, not just created new parks, because that's what technically they want to see is creation of new places um, and not, uh, not maintenance and uh, maintenance and upkeep of existing places. So. I know it doesn't answer everything about the question. I think that we just got to kick it down the road to council and get, get their opinion. Well, I know little, little league's working on replacing it. And I mentioned last time we met back in, I don't know how many months ago, but tap the brake and see what we could do. EPA funds, so I don't know either. So, yeah, I think that the best bet would be to consult council, let them make the ruling. You no, know, I mean if it's something, I mean I, I, I'm a, I personally I'm a hundred percent for it. I think it would be great, you know, helping out a league that's been in town for 50, 60 years, you know, longer. Actually, my dad played little league in Rock when he's seventy. So I think it's not a bad thing showing support for something like that. But at what point do you, you know, basketball, summer league basketball wants, uh, you know, striping on the basketball court repainted. So it's maybe it's a, you know, things like that. It kind of gets into, into a little bit of uh, whether it's a maintenance issue, an upkeep issue, or if it's, you know, viable. Anybody else? Nope. All right then. We um we got eight twenty, eight twenty four actually. Um, so I can get a uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We are adjourned. I'll see you guys Monday.